All right. How else are we going to pass the time? Did we already... I feel like maybe the figurine we do have ha was going to... Supposed to be like... The rest of the conversation with that. So maybe we should just go try going back to the church. Where's this white envelope? Okay, let's go back to the Martinez waterfront. And try to find that white envelope, because I'm not really sure what that is about, because I do not remember anywhere where there would be a white envelope. found money yeah okay so where's this white envelope I can't talk to this guy right nope anything here yes what is it well Raising two children and half a husband on a patrol officer's wage? Yes, I guess I am working class. <laughs> Do you want to rise up and tear down the entire freaking system with me? No. Okay, sort of. <laughs> but not with you. <laughs> like you are now. Don't take this the wrong way. Okay, goodbye. Again? I can't Spirit believe of this shit. Okay. Hey, was there something you needed? He nods in greeting. Well, well, bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. That's very true. Wow, ah, we're in his favor now. Let's check upstairs. We haven't been up here in a while. I don't know where to find the white envelope, so... Gotta check everywhere. Anybody? Try the handle. Oh. Oh, let's try to knock. Oh. Suppress the urge. Okay, we can't open that door. There's a radio here. Let's check the balcony. I hear thumping. Nothing? Hmm. There's not like a white envelope in my inventory or something, right? Nope. Handwritten note from the fridge. Oh, this! Oh! The white envelope is, uh, we're supposed to get the signature, right? Oh, our logic! Oh, okay, 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 we can do this now. Logic, logic, logic. Put on all the, the logic things. I'm glad I checked my inventory. That was a good call. Okay, logic, logic. Uh, I think our current hat does better than our slightly offensive hat. Yeah, plus two. Logic. Okay, cool. Plus five. Our clothes making us smart. Okay, so we're gonna try to find a loophole in the deal, apparently. Interact. 92! Yeah! 
There is no loophole. The simple truth is their current residents are going to lose their street access, and for the next 12 to 40 months, our lives will be dominated by constant construction noise. Right next door. Wait, what are the ramifications of this? Ramifications. Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. This is terrible. Poor people. Can't I do something? Well, you could trick Everard. Get someone random to sign the document. By the time the union boss finds out, your business here will already be concluded. Okay. So let's do that instead. Find someone to sign the document instead of the intended signees. Ooh. Where are we going to get to sign it, I guess? Hmm. Guess we'll just have to check with everybody. That'll be kind of tough. Definitely gotta check, uh, see if anyone downstairs might wanna sign the document. Okay, I just wanna check our room really quick. If there's anything else we can do in here. Okay, that door's locked. Encyclopedia locked. Alright, let's get out of here. Well, going to the balcony helped at least. All right. Yes. Nope. Again? Nope. Who wants to sign my paper? Hey, was there got the 20 real? Uh, not today. And why are you wasting? Okay, sorry. I sorry for offending you. Will you sign the paper? Nope. Will you sign the paper? Hi again, Jundam. Nope. This is so sad. Our composure was so Bye -bye, high. Jundam. But we failed. She probably won't sign it because she's a lawyer. And she's on Everard's side. Nothing to say to you. I've got nothing to say to you. Okay. Let's try to make it back to the church after we exit outside. Hmm, I wonder who else would sign the papers. Maybe Manana. Should we ask Manana? We'll try to ask the uh, the lorry men down here too, where the cars are. Maybe he'll sign it. Still here? Nope. Stuck in his. See Lang, do you want to sign my paper? Nope. <laughs> I doubt the... Actually, it would make most sense to go to the, uh... To go to the fisherman tracks in order to find someone to ask. That would make more sense. Uh, let's go to the church first, though. I want to see if we can try to do the Dolores Day... Uh, quest. Hmm. I wonder how what Kim is going to think of us going to a communist um, gathering. Alright, let's see. The mother of humans stands before you. Look, I can't get this figurine to her. Like what, is the task still on? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone to other things already. Okay. Hmm. Let's see what our thing says. You should offer her any and all you have one day if you meet her in person. We're not asked to give yourself, but here we are. 
Okay, so we can't do anything, right? Okay, let's interact with all our objects. Because I think I missed some, because I forgot that you could check all these. Map of Martinez. I think I look at it. A lot of these though. Handwritten note from the fridge. Okay. That was from Kuno's house, I guess. I want to get into talking about the mug again. Nope. Ooh, okay. The books. We don't need to look at the books right now though. Well, let's take a look at our badge. Okay, we did that as well. Alright, just checking. These are all items that cannot be examined. Alright. <sighs> I guess maybe our only choice is to ask that one guy. Or we could try to get along with the racist driver, which might be- we might be able to do that once we, uh, do the racist- the race theory thought. Okay. Uh, we might end up talking... Okay, I guess we can just... Go to the fisherman's. Uh, that one area. Find someone to sign the papers, and then we'll probably spend the rest of the time reading our ledger. And then we can look through some books that we have. Okay. Fisherman shacks. Our tenant, the police. Okay, so we don't want her to sign it. And we already got Leanne to sign it. There's no one else over here. Who else around here? Oh, maybe one of the drunk guys would sign it. Let's try that. Maybe the kids will sign it. Here, here, here. Children are stupid. I don't want to say that. Uh. Hello. The legend. He's back. And firstly. Nope. He's too Dunkle. drunk. Hey, wake up. Darn it. Dunk. Tequila uh. sunset. He nods in appreciation. Uh, could you and your pal sign this document? What's it about? He waves his hand uh, apathetically. I'll let my hand address the situation. Maybe you've heard. I used to be a very successful businessman. I've signed more than a few lease forms or whatever the fuck they were. Anyone's got a pen? The pro's gonna do it. Yes, have this green ape one. All right. Yeah, we did it. He grabs a pen and paper from your hands and very carefully scribbles on the dotted line next to Leon Carter. Idiot Doom Spiral. Uh, can I have the pen back too? Don't know if I've mentioned it, but I used to be a businessman. And as a businessman, I am going to keep what? the pen. For my trouble. He nods confidently. What? You just stole my pen. No, that was my favorite thing. Of all the things you have, this had better be worth losing the pen for. My favorite was the gun he lost. Okay, thanks. Hand-eye coordination. Uh, you've done a great service to the community, to the RCM, and to Revishal. Hey guys, I'm a hero. He hands you the envelope, and then waves his hand erratically at his companions. Hell yes! The red-nosed drunk brings his hand up to his head for a salute. The incapacitated drunk, a laser, snoring like an ancient rust rusting tractor. Anything else this merry band of adventurers can do for you? Or do you need to go and mail that serious-looking document of yours? There's a mailbox on the plaza. His face lightens up. I want to ask these guys a couple of things first. Mailbox plaza. Got it by. Okay. What's on your mind? Okay. Nice. 
My pen is gone forever, sad. But we can mail this at least. Alright, let's do it. Put the mailbox... Uh, in Envelope in the mailbox. In the plaza. Okay, so that is... Uh... Right over here somewhere. It's not far from the entrance of the Whirling Rags, this mailbox. Hello, my little mailbox. I knew I get to use this mailbox for something. Other than developing a personal relationship, looks like you were right. Drop the white envelopes into the mailbox. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail has collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Holly did the right thing. You can't trust that slug, Everard. You know. He's going to play you somehow. Thank you, little mailbox. Nice. Okay, so we gotta talk to Everard. That'll be a good way to spend our time. Before, uh... We get ourselves organized. And... Probably after talking to Everard, hopefully we'll have enough skill points to start on our new thought. Alright, let's see. So, to get there, I think the fastest way is just to go this way. And we have no other white checks, except for the warded door. Cafeteria window, trash container, don't need. Okay, the warded door. Let's check that out really quick before we leave. Pretty sure that's in here. Alright, warded door, I'm ready for you. I believe... It was up here, right? Ooh, it's dark. Flashlight! There we go. Uh, was it this way? Nope, oh, dice maker lady. We'll talk to you soon, lady. Oh, what happened? Is this Emma's Altier? It's not in here. Oh. Looks like there are remains of a 24-hour window repair shop. Oh, our logic is kicking in now that we're a little bit smarter. Warded door? Where's the warded door? That's not the door, right? Hmm. It should be in here somewhere. I remember we came across it, um... When we went here and here last time. Or, when we went in here the first time. I mean. We could drink alcohol to do it. <laughs> Didn't see it though, kind of strange. Okay, let's just check everywhere we can. Must have just missed it somewhere. 
Uh, nope, not in here. It's just a bunch of junk. Oh, this was the door, right? But we can't check it anymore because it's open now. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay, okay. What a waste. I don't think there's anything else we can extrapolate from this stuff here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's get out of here. Talk to Everett. Ah, okay. We talked to her through the furnace and then the warded door was opened. I remember now. All right, Everett, I am ready for you. Well, I... Oh, wrong way. Shine this flashlight in your eyes. Okay, let's try talking to this guy just in case. Looking for some... If there's anything you can... Change the topic. The way he says it makes it almost sound like a threat. People who've studied these things say that we are superior by design. Oh? Huh? Uh, yeah, I think I can get down with racism. Oh, okay, I guess we want to say this. Okay, so now we're actually going to have a conversation Good. with this guy, but... If we, the evening people, pull together, we can form a bulwark against these troubled times. Root out the forces that seek to undermine the well-being of our people. Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to apples. Fine. He's giving you the runaround. Let's be honest, you were bested. Uh, it's a but, but not the. Mm. I'm not the only one. People who've studied. So, this concerns you, policeman. What's this so cultural theory? Be... It's what the kips of Boogie Street are going for, right under our noses, and the others too on the radio. Heard any chanson lately? Heard any motetos or leader? No. Dominating culture is how they plan to win. They say so themselves. It's true. Also, okay, whatever. go right ahead. You may... Oh, not much anymore. Apples. Yeah. Ah, our rhetoric is too low, that's why. I don't know what you're talking about. Then why are you smiling? Listen up, fuckwit. You don't scare me. Actually, Look, we do. I ain't saying nothing. I'm your brother, remember? Like fuck you are. Why is your partner a multi-ethnic rainbow man? Why do you not arrest Si Lang? Fuck off. I ain't telling you shit. Darn it. Didn't believe me. Well, we can try again once we go through the racist theory thought. Maybe that'll change something. Okay. I think we can get to Everard through here. We have to go all the way past the crates. Okay. Well, at least we found out that Everard did actually have a trick up his sleeve with the the youth center he was planning to make. And hopefully what we did would put a stop to that. Alright. Time to skedaddle all the way to Everett. Everett. 
Evert. Come on, go, go. Okay, all the way over here. Oh, we can open this chest now, right? Oh, fall in the Ec Ultra Series gloves. Yes. Oh my gosh, we can wear all the cool things now. Oh, that means I have to buy the shoes. Should I go buy the shoes? It's not like I need the money for anything anyway. Look, now we're a cool looking kinda. Do we need fallen pants? Do we have fallen pants? Oh, is it Kuno the one that has the fallen pants? I think he does. We'll have to go talk to him later to try to get the whole set. Let's see if this guy has anything new to say to us. Oh, no. Not at all. This is not a fishing rod, is it? It's... What is it? What is that? Alright, Everett. Hello? Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Titus can be a handful sometimes. Now, what can Everett Claire do for you today? Miss Stone, I mailed the signatures you asked me to mail. The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. He claps his hands together like a child who's been offered cotton candy. My friend, the mailman, yeah, confirms points. the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a future and proven to be a true man of the left. I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing is off the table. He leans forward and looks straight into your eyes with the warmest of smiles. Judging by how happy he is, it looks like he did it. He doesn't appear to suspect trickery. Okay, cool. Uh, the signatures I got. I know you plan to- Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Uh, did you order the- Did you order the Kangman killed? I did not, Harry. He shakes his head energetically. I'm very, very glad he's dead. What do you gain from him being dead? Why a war, of course. Yes, but what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Harry. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. They're trained military people. Aren't you afraid for your men? Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1. And that's just Martin A's. With all the unions in Rebishol, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men. Or 15 men. Or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. <laughs> yeah, everyone hates them except ultra-liberals, maybe, which happens to me. How is this connected to the strike? Harry, there is no strike, only war. Class war. Or, in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait. He pauses is to rub his chin. you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not gonna give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. The word F rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. Is that why you haven't let Joyce in here? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gormont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her arsehole. She has no chance. What? Tits from her arsehole. <laughs> it's a local saying. Okay, that's very, um, vulgar. Uh, why are you telling me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. It's already happening. He looks at the swordfish clock and nods. Uh, how many of you guys are there in the Union? 2,372. He replies like a whip. Yours truly, of course. 
2,373 is a sizable contingent for a labor organization in Riversal. How are you going to fund your new independent harbor? Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. You can't possibly hope to continue like you have. Clients will leave en masse. Sure, some will go, but mark my words. The company will be unpleasantly was surprised here. to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. By bold new revenues, you mean drug trade? Drug trade? Now you're being stupid, Harry. <laughs> there are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Summer and Isola. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. Wow, a neurochemical, a psychoactive labor uprising slash hostile takeover. That's just the top of the iceberg though, isn't it? The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad. Has bad optics, may be illegal in some countries. The Debardes Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. We're gonna transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. He slams his fist so on the desk once more. Kid can get his benefit, and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off Risperazole. And the kids on the street don't have to give up on speed and uh, Pyrolodon? I'm an old fashioned guy, Harry. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys. But I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share. And I'd keep that stuff far away from Martin A's. Hmm. Makes sense to regulate the drug trade like this. Keeps it out of more dangerous hands. I mean... Oh, Harry, you've misunderstood. I have no drugs in my hands. It's all far removed from me, like some half-remembered dream. He raises both hands, palms open. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbour's turnover, just like the harbour is, but a small part of Martin A's. Mm, so is there a trade or isn't there? Let's look at the big picture. Martin A's as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth. And everyone's going to pull their weight. Was he focusing on the drug trade? He was almost admitting to it. Hold on, I don't want to look at the big picture. I want to look at the drug trade you almost admitted to. Well, I mean, if it has the word incorporate in it, then I like it. I'm a money guy. That's very ambitious. I love what you're doing for the working man. I'm not feeling a whole lot of reversal here. Not of the flags or kings. Honestly, this is it's not my place to judge or express an opinion. Hmm. Keep focusing on the drug trade. So one is very literal. Four and two... Four doesn't make sense. Five also, we probably don't want to say. So it's either two or three. I mean, I feel like three is the most... The most, uh, what's the word? Agreeable? Thank you, Harry. Okay. Thank you. He bows cursely in his chair. I have no idea how much it means to me, because in many ways, you are that working man. You have already done so much work. Can I ask you about the specific union members? 
We're way past specific union members now. This is the big time. His eyes are shining. We're talking about the future of Revachol here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He points to the he door. He to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. There's something different about him now. He's more vibrant, more alive in his big time mode. Can I get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with he you. He turns solemn. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Where is it? An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street An is she's a old woman? Character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy. The one he described as terrifying. So the gun's still with the woman who bought it from Roy. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. He smells and shakes his head in wonderment. stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway... The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Okay. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. Was she waving it at, around at people? As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. He smiles. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. There it is again, the pigs, like Roy said. Not good at all. Can you set up a meeting? I already have. Oh, tonight, oh, starting tonight. 10 o'clock. Oh. Near the old fish market on the coast. The one on the boardwalk. A little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous. But you did ask for this. Now, he claps his back hands. to the fun stuff. Okay. Okay, so this is more important, I think. So we'll go to this instead. And then if we can try to go to the communist meeting, we can try. If not, we'll tr have to try that next... Or, uh, the next day. She'll be there from tw uh, 2200 to uh, 200. Okay. I want to see if there's anything We've been running with renewed zeal. Interesting here. Drug train. All they do. The company think we're going to trans I'm an old fat. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow. Oh, how anyway, let's not focus. Let's look at the bi I'm going to unite. Hmm. Let's try saying this, I guess. Yes, if you start thinking about it like that, the socialist municipal body sort of is like a corporation, isn't it? It uses corporate law. We're in oh. Let's try the first option. I want to try We've that been again. Running back with renewed zeal sparked by communal drug trade. All they did. The company it probably results in the same thing, but. But if I were to supply ingredients. Oh, Harry. Anyway, let's not fail. Let's look at the. I'm going to unite them. No, no, Harry. That's boring. He sighs. All right, it's gone. The hypothetical raw materials trade is off the table. It's such a small and insignificant slice of revenue. I'm cutting it. Boys. He's around the container. Easy about it. We're not doing it. Can we talk about my beautiful incorporated Martin A's and its many-sided business ventures now? This bold new vision of incorporated socialism I'm offering. Okay. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. You have no idea how much it means to me. Okay, so we don't need to say this. Great, Harry. Great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. Suddenly, there's sadness to his tone. This. He points to you then himself. So great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together. But if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Okay, I think this I'm is just our conversation, right? Very nice, Harry. Okay. Convert the pigs and get your gun back. Someone's been running around with your side and pretending to be a police officer. You must meet her at the old fish market at uh, 2200 and get your service weapon back. Just walk past the fishing village until you see the boardwalk. Hooey. Backyard wall. What is this backyard wall? 
Okay, so this is time sensitive, I guess. So we'll have to do that tonight. Let's check our thought cabinet. Okay. Mazovian socioeconomics is almost done. Can't go out this way, so let's head out. Okay, we'll pass some time reading our ledger, I think. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna bother you with a long greeting, just like we talked about before. I know you're probably a busy, busy man being an important police officer and all. And personally, I think the more people keeping the peace, the better. Okay, so I want to talk to Leo because uh, Everard mentioned something about that. Leo, you seem to know everyone around here. I wanted to ask about someone. Mr. Everard doesn't really want me to talk to people about union guys. But who did you want to talk about? Tell me about this Edgar guy you keep mentioning. Mr. Edgar is Mr. Everett's brother. He looks a bit younger, he does, but a very smart fellow. Very smart fellow indeed. He's away on some union business. Not even in Revershaw, they say. Don't interrupt. All kinds of places he visits. Him and his brother both do when they're on a vacation. Right now, it's Mr. Everett's turn to look after the union. But last year, he spent a whole winter in South Africa. He chuckles. <laughs> Left with the first autumn rains and didn't come back before the trees were green again. The little guy chuckles again. <laughs> the trade must have been lucrative for the trip to be so long. Tell me about Manana. He's a union man through and through. Good guy. Falls silent, hesitating. He's very calm, laid back, doesn't do much, talks to Everard sometimes. Honestly, I don't know what he does for us, but it must be important because everybody likes him. Yes, they do. I think that's what he does. He makes everyone feel a little better. Turn around, Measurehead. Whoa, he's really something. The little man starts <laughs> laughing. He doesn't talk much to me usually, but when he does, I don't really understand most of what he's saying. He suddenly Actually, falls quiet. I don't think he would like me running my mouth about him like that. Once he said he's a dragon to this mob fellow who came picking a fight with some union men. Yeah, I think he really believes Jean Luc was a dragon because he ran right off another time he almost killed another guy but i shouldn't talk about that uh tell me about titus oh titus is a long shoreman through and through he was born on a boat they say his veins are probably filled with salt water i tell you <laughs> nice friendly sort old titus is little man rubs a patch on his elbow tell me about everard uh i'd best not i mean i could but i don't think mr everard would like it very much you better ask him yourself, mister. If anything, the ever-present smile on Leo's face gets even warmer. Tell me about Rene. The night guard. Ooh, he's a peculiar fellow. Leo looks at the guard he's booth the on the wall. He's the strong, silent type, you could say. We talk all the time, but I don't really know much about him. He plays patank with my old human studies teacher, Mr. Martin, down at the plaza. I think he's the only fellow who actually knows old Rene. They lived on the same street their entire lives. He even dated the same girl on and off for as long as I can remember. He chuckles again. <laughs> Strange fellows. Mr. Martin was always real nice to me in school. I remember once. Guess someone was your human studies teacher? Mr. Martin, yes. Don't really remember much about him. I was just a boy back then. Mr. Martin, Ga Gaston also taught history and human studies to the Clare brothers. Hmm. I guess we maybe we can ask Gaston about uh the, the Clare brothers. Uh, sure, man. It's actually an interesting, uh, discovery. Okay, we also have to ask Kuno about the fallen pants, because maybe we can get another pair. Alright, let's get out of here. Let me out, let me out.
Okie dokie. Yeah, unfortunately we might have to talk to this guy to get news about the the lady. Still here. Stuck in this damn Sticky. jam, my man. What's up? Ah, <sighs> that sucks. Guess we might have to. Uh, okay, we need to ask Kuno about the pants. Wonder if we can still buy it from him, potentially. Decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Eh. What is this shit? Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? Oh, <laughs> that. Yeah. Kuno, good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk. Kuno doesn't. Okay. Guess we don't have any way to buy pants. I'll die before I squeal. She doesn't want to talk to us, so. Let's go buy the shoes, why not? I don't need money for anything else. We can get a pair of speakers too. <laughs> oh, it's this way. Oh, yeah, let's talk to uh, Gaston about Everard and Edgar. It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. How may I have the citizens militia on this fine day? Oh, you mentioned Jean Marie Leo. Who is that? Oh, sweet Jenny. He gets a dreamy, dreamy look in his eyes. Woman in Hall of Revachol. Maybe the entire world. Do not defile her memory, Gaston. Let her rest in peace. There's an almost imperceptibly small tremble in his voice. So you both know her? We knew her. All right. This friendly face lights Lived up. Lived on the same street our entire lives, just two houses apart. The three of us have been best friends since we were four. She was Rene's first girl back when the prick was 16. They were courting till he decided he'd rather die for some great ideal than just be happy. He looks like the carboneer, uh, almost gently. And then you stole her from me. He jerks forward, but then grabs his chest and stops. Do not intervene. Well, technically, you stole her from me because we'd been pretty close ever since you two had that falling out over the ink you spilled over her pretty yellow dress. We were just boys then. This was different. You. The tall veteran looks at you and nods. No point starting this all over again. For the thousandth and the first time. Especially when we have company. Officer. Uh, what happened to her? She died of pneumonia two winters ago. It was a quiet passage. Peaceful. He smiles faintly. Rene and I were both by her bedside when she... He pauses, searching for the right word. Died. No use sugarcoating it. Once bring her back. Will it now? He sharply fills the silence and adds. Departed. Hmm. Until the very hand she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. A quick grimace of pain passes over Renee's features, but he immediately regains control, his face now a dispassionate mask again. Why do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up her mind about anything. What to have for breakfast, favorite color, or which one of us to marry? The look in his eyes is happy and distant. She was always leaving one of us for the other, but never long enough to actually get married. Nothing wrong with weighing your opinions first, that's a bit odd. Heck! Technically, we're both still engaged to her. He says with a chuckle. You always confused her. Couldn't let us be happy. He says with heavy Such resentment. With your fancy words and pastries. He suddenly remembers you are still here. You are still there. False silent turns away. Of course. That's officer. so weird. Memories are always sweet, sweet. Jen. There's nothing of else. Course, officer. I want to ask Memories you about the union again. All we have left. Sure, officer. 
He smiles. They are the good guys around here. What do you need? Oh, I guess we already uh, talked about this. What when we originally you? talked to them, I think. What a prick. Okay. Thank you, officer. Sweet, sweet Shekun. Mm. She was always leaving one of us for the other. Heck, you always can. Okay. Well, of course. Of interesting. Does Renee have anything new to say? Let's see. I like playing in the dark. Drama. Instincts. Feels like being on recon again. I understand that Jean Marie, uh, Jenny Marie, meant a lot to you. There's nothing for you to understand here. It is not our death you are investigating. Were the circumstances of her death in any sense un unusual? Uh, where was the photo of you two taken? Revachal Fair, 91 in the Thorberg district. A parade was held to honor Guillaume Lullion's name day, and the Carabineers marched in the place of honor. You looked happy in the picture, smiling. This was the happiest day of my life. This is said in such a matter-of-fact tone. It leaves no room for doubt. Were they unusual? Absolutely not. His voice is she coarse. She died of pneumonia in her bed at the age of 79. This is highly usual. 79. Wow. The love triangle lasted a long time, I guess. What happened with you, Gaston, and uh, Jean uh, Jenny Marie? I was 22 when I returned from King Guillaume's Akira operation in the south and found my sweetheart in the arms of this wretch. I won her back. But while I was dealing with some... issues... He gives Gaston a hateful look. You were like a dark cloud sucking the joy out of every living thing around you. And you... He glances you at you. Hurt her. I... Uh, I... He looks down at his boots, lips moving, but the words are unaudible. Those days and memories are gone. He nods and looks Renee with something resembling compassion. The old soldier says nothing, but when his glance quickly runs over Gaston's face, there's an odd look in his eyes. Interesting. There's nothing for you to understand. Okay. What a random tidbit. Okay. Uh, uh what were we gonna do next? Maybe we could try. Oh, we need to finish these slots, right? Okay. Ooh, a Mazovian associate economics is almost done. Let's take a look at our ledger. These are all these books we can look at, too. Um, here we go. Read a case file. The square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entity entry rune in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks on a rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. But that's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry rune was square-shaped. You never found the bullet, and then another body showed up, also with a square hole in its forehead. A sequence killer? Who knows? Those pages are missing. Oh, what next? The couch. Uh, okay, let's put it away for now. Let's, uh, check our thought here. Oh, sorry. I s clicked smell. Uh, close this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, there we go. Socioeconomics. Nought point nought 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 percent of communism has been built. Evil child-murdering billionaires still rule the world with a shit-eating grin. All he has managed to do is make himself sad. He is starting to suspect Krasmezov fucked him over, personally, with his socio-economic theory. It has, however, made him into a very smart boy with something like a university degree in truth. Instead of building communism, he now builds a precise model of this grotesque, duplicitous world. Left-wing dialogue options give plus four XP, but no authority and no visual calculus. Very strange. Hmm. 
Okay, so we can erase 15th Indo tribe and then we can start uh, internalizing anti advanced race theory. Wasteland of reality is still gonna take a while, but let's forget this. Then we will uh, internalize this, sadly, but it has to be done. Fooled by the absurdity. All right, let's keep reading. Uh, the couch in an unexpected location. Some uh, a-holes brought their couch outside and hung out on it. In the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside, by the motorway. You know, an ex unexpected location. They were young and thought they looked cool in it. They looked really cool, <laughs> like models. They looked really cool, like a rock band. Insufferable uh, D-word, you're... Young people are the worst. So anyway, you got a complaint about the dang sofa or couch or whatever it was. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations that they took it to, where they also, where they also took photos of themselves on it, and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee because they felt it's intellectual. Cigarette butts, coffee cups, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up, and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. Did I ever catch those guys? No, you didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real uh, gosh dang job. You don't have time to be chasing out, ch chasing down the couch a-holes. You have a real job to do. What next? Murder at the hookah par parlor. Murder. Tum tum tum. Dun 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 dun. I think that's what it's supposed to be. At the hookah parlor. Was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills. Mills, who is now dead, of the circumstances completely unconnected to the murder at the hookah parlor. Wait, how? Being to death by a throng of Villa, Villa, Villa Lobos gang members when him and his partner J.M., only initials mentioned, uh, answered a call one night. It's a sad story and it really represent it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Right, on with the murder. I'm gonna take a sip here. Okay, Joseph Mills was on this case that he couldn't just solve, was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker, a real brain twister. Was on it for like a month. The captain got impatient. Uh, poop or get off the pot, Mills. Mills didn't get off the pot, not yet. He kept at it for a couple weeks more, racking his brains, running every theory, as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the hookah parlor. Tough case, he said. Toughest he's ever had. Wait, was Joseph Mills a good cop? No, he was awful. Awful sense of humor, too. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really? Uh, yeah. Really that. Still, he'd been on it for months now. He said it was the final case. He said it was uncrackable. The murder were wrenched into thin air. That the gosh dang hookah parlor was all he talked. About. That gosh dang hookah parlor was all he talked about. Okay, so the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere. And you look into it. Here's a setup: a young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. Can you get an eye off of it? No, it's in water vapor. It doesn't do anything really cool yeah really lame so anyway young man in his 20s found with his skull busted open right on the floor of the hookah parlor in the middle of the day no one else is in there no only only client that day in perfect health too some kind of movie producer no one enters no one exits he's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning all noon like he usually does he's a regular no calls nothing just sucking on the hookah until 1545 then bam he's down on the floor with his skull busted open blood everywhere what happened how can that be Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fit. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. Table's low, heavy, really sharp edge. He sucked hookah, stood up, passed out, hit his head on the table, and died? See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply. And you don't notice it until you have to get up and go to the bathroom. He must have sucked a lot of it. Yeah, he liked his hookah. Steven was his name. What was he doing there for six hours? Smoking hookah? Didn't you hear? I don't know. Try, trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was murder at the hookah parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective. In about 30 minutes, had has passed. Piecing it together. Next. Okay. That's it. That was a kind of fun adventure there. Uh, ooh, it's 2123, so we have a little bit more time. Let's head to the location, maybe. Uh, 
Okay, actually, we'll just read a bit. Uh, did we finish reading the cockatoo book? Let's check. I think we did. 16 days of coldest April. A primer for small kids. Let's read the kids, the children's book. Ooh, before that, um, let's actually, I want to check the bookstore. It might not be open anymore, but... Okay, it's closed. Darn. Let's gonna see if there's any more stuff we can read, and we have some money. So. That's okay, let's read this kid's book. Exactly what I need! Mm-hmm. This book will show you the score. Get you oriented on those basic concepts you appear to be hazy on. The anthropomorphic bear will give you the lowdown on your life. On what? The alphabet. Okay, we already did this. <laughs> of course, obviously you already know all this. It's the alphabet. Who doesn't know the alphabet? You. You don't know the alphabet. But never mind. <laughs> oh man. Uh, do we want to read... Uh, communism? Or do we want to read... The rather excruciating story about two lovers during an, a period of ethnic unrest. Psychological realism. Uh, I mean, we're on a communist role, so let's read this. Uh, the face of King Frizzle smiles at you. For some reason, the smile now strikes you as more force than it did before. Read the editor's note. Ooh, breakthrough imminent. Comrade, as you know, this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression of Du cristal à la fumé. Fumi? Fumier. Uh, his, his was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turn uh, to smoke under communism. But like the structures of the idealist capital of the capitalist ideology, we are too are at risk of going a la fumier. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon feed their readers is reassuring drivel, La Fumier is committed to telling the radical truth even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. Only four issues and it sounds like they've already alienated their readership. So perhaps they've overestimated the market demand for this kind of commentary. So please, if you value our radical Mazovian perspective on contemporary politics, culture, and international affairs, please consider subscribing today. Yours and struggle, the editors. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. Okay, let's check our thoughts really quick. Caustic echo. Splat. Splatity splat, Harry. You know what that means? It means the shit has fallen off the stick, and it's bad again. You lost something, and it's not your gun. It's not your badge. It's not your uniform. You can find all of those things. No, the charred echo was left by the one thing you will never find again. Not even if you dive into the sea in search of it. It's the love of your life, Harry. The scent is everywhere. The sound is in everything. The alarm goes off at three. Minus authority. Couldn't stop her from leading. All motor learning caps raised by one. Advanced race theory. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind-bending phylogenetics appear more distant and, to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. The mystery is mostly aesthetic. Okay. Oh my gosh, look at those skill points. Holy crap. From the Caustic Echo. Interesting. Okay, I'm so ready to dump that. Right after we talk to the measure head and the maybe we'll get um another conversation with the racist guy. The lorry driver that is. Oh he's still here, okay good. Will you talk to me now? Hmm? Looking for some I don't know what you're talking about. It is I don't think you're a listen up for quit. You don't scare me. You I ain't saying nothing. Like fuck you are. Why? I don't know what you're talking 
I don't know what listen up for quit. You are all bark and no I'm not in trouble. Okay. So yeah, we're not gonna get through to him unless we do the things he wants us to do. So that is going nowhere. Can't believe it's almost twenty two hundred. <laughs> 